Hi, and welcome to the Reiki from the Farm podcast brought to you by me, Pam Allen LeBlanc from Hidden Brook Farm. I am a scientist, a businesswoman, and a licensed Reiki master teacher with the International Center for Reiki Training. Each week in this podcast, you'll be entertained as you learn about a wide variety of relevant Reiki topics, helping you become a more knowledgeable and effective Reiki practitioner. We caution you, though, this podcast may also dramatically improve your life, and we are so happy that you're here. Welcome, everyone, on this week's podcast and on this month's Reiki call. We're talking together, friends and colleagues, Pam Allen LeBlanc, Karen Harrison, and Karen Keg. We are all licensed Reiki master teachers with the International Center for Reiki Training. And we're talking this time, this month, this week, about Reiki and how it can heal sexual abuse trauma. And this is a subject that came up during one of my classes. Uh, somebody had healed some pretty significant health issues with Reiki, but was still confused or wondering how to get through some previous sexual trauma and some childhood sexual abuse. And she wondered if there was anything that we could do to help her. And so the three of us talked about it and decided to get together and talk on this. So welcome, Karen Harrison and Karen Keg. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hosting us on this important topic. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Thank yeah, this you. is important work that I address all the time in my Reiki practice, uh, since I'm also a counselor. So happy to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm thrilled as well. So guys, before we begin, I just want to let you know some of the great things that are coming up. I've got Animal Communication Level 1 and 2, March 23rd and 24th. And for the first time ever, another an, an Animal Communication Level 3 Professional Practitioner class, March 25th. We also have some animal communication classes coming up in an Asian time zone. We'll be doing an introduction in June. And the class will be July 12th to 14th. In April and May, there's Level 1 and 2 in Masters here at the farm and online. There's Animal Reiki 1 and 2 in Masters, both at the farm and online. And I'll be speaking, teaching Animal Communication 1 and 2 at the Northeast Reiki Retreat in Silver Bay, New York, May 3rd to 5th. And I'll put a link to the retreat in the podcast outline. I'd love to see you guys in New York if you can be there. And then go ahead and join us in Campobello in July for Reiki Level 1 and 2 and Master classes and also Animal 1 and 2 and Master. And those classes will include getting out on the ocean with the whales. I also want to invite you all to attend an Open to Peace workshop at Omega Institute that I'll be part of June 16th to 21st, and as well the Wisdom of Reiki Conference also at the Omega Institute June 21st to 23rd. And I'll be at that conference along with Colleen Benelli and William Rand and Brett Bevel and several other of our wonderful Reiki colleagues. So we'd love to have you join us. Guys, what do you have coming up? Just check Reiki-Institute.com. I have a uh, regular Reiki 1 and 2, Reiki Master, Kuna Reiki coming up in April. I only offer that four times a year. And Animal Reiki 1 and 2 and Animal Reiki Master. So just check my website. Yeah, and you're working on making it so people can join you in Ecuador eventually. Yes, I'm sorry, right. I am. We do have in the works. Jay Jackson and I are talking about co-teaching um, Animal Reiki Master uh, with a trip to the Galapagos Islands, which is part of Ecuador, and and possibly Karuna Reiki. That includes a trip to the Amazon rainforest, which Karen Harrison has visited with me. So I'm excited. Amazing. About that. that so just check my website. That'll be upcoming in the in the fall. Probably yeah, November. that's coming in the fall. Okay, we got to keep our eyes peeled for that. So give me a little heads up on that one. Okay, Karen, and yeah, and Karen Harrison, what do you have coming up? 
I have all the levels coming up on my website at karenharrison.net, Karuna Reiki, uh, Reiki Master, Reiki 1 and 2, Animal Reiki 1 and 2, and Animal Master. So they're all on my website, karenharrison.net. Amazing. So guys, before we go too far, I'm just going to invite everybody to bring your hands together in Gasho. And we're going to go ahead and activate our Reiki energy. And if you have symbols, activate those as well. It's very uncommon to not know somebody who has experienced sexual abuse. It's so pervasive in our society. And so whether that's something that you've experienced yourself or a family member or a friend, we're so glad that you're here today. Go ahead and place your hands comfortably on your body, just giving yourself Reiki and breathe. And I invite you to just open your heart, open your mind, and open your attention with the intention to allow Reiki to heal whatever comes up for you during our conversations. Whether you've been a parent of someone or someone in your family, whether it's something you've experienced yourself, a friend or a loved one, this is a very common trauma that impacts and affects so many. And so we just invite Reiki to envelop any uncomfortable feelings as they come up, any difficulties that arise, and release them with love for us. And we also invite Reiki to surround ourselves, our loved ones, anyone who has experienced abuse in the past and to assist them and remain with them as long as it's needed. We are so blessed that we are not helpless. We are so blessed to be of this lineage of light bringers creating wellness on the earth today. And that begins with each of us creating wellness within ourselves. Thank you for this Reiki family that we are all a part of, our friends, our colleagues, our family. And thank you for the gift of Reiki to assist us with the difficulties that are often part of living life on this planet, on the earth. Aho and Namaste. Yeah, thank you, Pam. That was beautiful. You're welcome. Guys, in my practice as a Reiki master and a Reiki practitioner, sexual trauma is so common. It's funny because in a way, not funny, funny, peculiar in a way that it's something that we think of as isolated and, and not common, but it's so common. I see it among my clients. Even at one point, I had a question of whether I had been sexually abused myself because I had all the symptoms of, of it. And the energy was just very clear with me that I was actually such a powerful empath that although I hadn't been, I had brought in the feelings and emotions of others who had been. And my body didn't know that those were not my emotions. And so it reacted in much the same way. Um, but this is something that's so common. Um, I see it all the time in my practice. And I think I just wanted to mention that so that if anybody listening has experienced this, just an understanding that you are not alone by any stretch. And what do you guys notice in your practices on this topic? The same. And I don't know if, if you noticed, but during the invocation, I my hands automatically went to my throat in my sacral area because this is where the blocks seem to, to show up. And especially with my clients. I can't tell you how many times I've just asked them, like, 
Have you experienced some either sexual assault, sexual molestation as a child? And several times they've said, how did you know? I've never told anybody like I'm psychic or something. I'm like, no, it's just a guess. I said, because it's happened to me and it's very common that we store that trauma and it turns into a block in the sacral area and we don't talk about it. And then it becomes a block here. Um, it's so common. And the, I think that the most damaging part of it is that you don't talk about it. It's the shame surrounding whether it was sexual abuse as a child or sexual assault of any kind. And I'm talking about men as well as women. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's, it, there's this incredible shame around it. What did I do to invite that? Or I shouldn't have dressed that way. Or I shouldn't have, what I should have screamed. Or I should have fought harder. I should have. And then you just, and, and it affects so many parts of your life. So I'm so grateful that your client wanted to talk about this because it's very common, but we just don't talk about it. I, I agree, Karen. And I, I remember talking with my husband about it and saying, actually, I don't know if I know anybody who hasn't been assaulted in some way. Um, and he was shocked. He couldn't believe that. And I just said, yeah, it's just really common. Yeah. yeah. I think the statistics, then I was just going to look them up real quick. Uh, <laughs> last I saw are like one in five women and something similar for men also. And here and I bet you it's even higher than that. <laughs> I imagine it is because many people have not admitted it. Um, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, you can look it up. It, it's very prevalent. And because I'm a counselor and I advertise that I do trauma work, I have many people coming into me to work on their own sexual assault, or perhaps they are the parent of someone who was sexually assaulted. And so there's feelings about it either way. Yeah. And what caused you to get into that, Karen, as a counselor? As a counselor, it's such a common issue that it, it's important to work with that. But I've been working with sexual issues ever since I was in my practicum in college. Somehow I just all the cases with different sexual things were assigned to me. And probably because of my own wounding and experience on the one hand, I came from a family that was pretty open sexually and open about the body and so forth. But then in my first marriage, I experienced my own uh, sexual abuse and wounding and had my own therapy to, uh, to work through that. As counselors, we often work on the things that we have experienced ourselves and have done the healing work around because then we can speak with more compassion and authority in helping our own clients. And then several years ago, I started focusing my practice solely on Reiki. I'd done the Reiki and the counseling side by side for years, but I found that with trauma, completed trauma, that's trauma that is past, the Reiki could help much quicker than the counseling techniques that I was using. And now granted, I'm not trained in EMDR, the, the eye movement, the sensitization and reprocessing, but you now I was trained in the tapping solution. <clears throat> and I just found the Reiki to work much quicker. And I've had good success in clearing out the old trauma in one to six sessions. Usually it takes uh, two to four. And the counseling techniques just couldn't work as quickly. Now, if someone has ongoing trauma where they're in an abusive situation or dealing with that, then it's going to take much longer because there's more things going on there. There's the getting re-traumatized over and over. Right. But if it's completed, if they're out of the situation, and I find the same, Karen, that when I do deal with clients, two to four sessions is normal, sometimes a little longer. But yeah, that's normal too, which is incredible when you think about mm -hmm. it. Because in Karen Keg, one of the things you had mentioned was just what are some of the things that that people who are that do experience this type of abuse, what are some of the things that they experience? And you talked about the shame, but there's a lot more to it, isn't there? There's Yeah. And you don't or at least I didn't realize that I was carrying around all of that. I thought, oh, this is just how I am. 
Mm-hmm. I'm a people pleaser. I'm I'm quiet. I know I'm pretty, believe it or not, I'm I don't have a lot of confidence. But I have had acting classes, so I can act like I have confidence. <laughs> there's there's a lot that you you learn to cope, you learn to, to compensate. But I had toxic relationship after toxic relationship. I remember when Oprah did the special where she focused on sexual predators, and that was so eye-opening to me because I remember as a child thinking do I just have it written across my forehead? Because it happened first with a family member. It happened with teachers. It happened over and over. And I thought, do I just have like do bad things to me across my forehead? And when I watched that special and listened to those sexual predators, I thought, yeah, I did. They look for kids from broken families, from blah, 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 all of that. And to hear them say that they really were predators and that they couldn't help it the way for whatever reason, Karen knows more about this. She talked about the repeating cycles, but to realize it's not my fault. I really thought there was something wrong with me. And so you carry that and you don't realize that's the cause of it, but you have this sense of not just guilt, but shame. There's something wrong with you. And that affects everything you do and how you show up in the world. And it wasn't until... I found Reiki at 49 and it was my very first Reiki class. I remember this big release and I still didn't know that's what it was, but there was like, it was like, it was so embarrassing because I was just sobbing on the table in my class. And I remember Nora Daikama was holding my feet and she said, that's okay. Just let it go. And I didn't even know what it was, but that started like this release. And Karen, before we started the podcast, was talking about how the wonderful thing about this is you don't even have to know all the details or what it is or what it was or all of that. But Reiki, especially the Holy Fire Reiki, its main quality is purification. That's the first thing. And so it starts releasing all that junk that you just pushed down, didn't think about, move ahead. Try not to think about. Yeah. And because what's the point? It happened. And it's just that you carry that around energetically, all of that. And so once you start to release all of that, holy fire, Reiki really helped. And then, then you can start to heal. Yeah. And then you can, the next part of the holy fire energy is the empowerment. And you begin to feel empowered and you begin to ask for guidance and you begin to ask for changes in your life. And so that's how it just, it it happens. And I didn't have to pull all that up and talk about it. I did have some therapy in my thirties, but there was so much. And so that's what Karen is saying. Like in a couple of sessions, it's just that the Reiki goes to work and you don't have to relive it. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to, it's just, it starts to release. And when you're ready, when you're ready, I think that's that's why we get called to Reiki. We go to a Reiki session or we feel like we're called to a class and we're not really sure why it's because on some level there's stuff that needs to release. So, um, yeah. And And then go ahead, Karen. Yeah. I'd like to mention it doesn't end with the sexual abuse. Then many times people, um, will act out in different ways as a coping mechanism. Sometimes people will become promiscuous because they think that their only worth is as a sexual object. Maybe they become abusers themselves. Maybe they try to numb out with uh, alcohol or drugs, or maybe they regularly dissociate and are not present in their bodies and are just gone or any number of unhealthy coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, the numbing out. I think that's really common for people. And I was sharing with Pam and Karen before we started the podcast that when I look to talk about this subject, like how does Reiki help you? And I'm like, how did that help? Like I just said with the Holy Fire, I think that started it all. But for me personally, what helped, what you were saying, like the coping mechanism, the dissociation and everything. I think the animal Reiki helped me the most after the Holy Fire helped clear everything out. I did not, I wasn't in my body and I, I would stuff. I would eat too much. I used to drink too much. Sometimes I would, I would just like stuff those feelings down. And I think that the animal Reiki, especially like the invocation at the beginnings of class, every time I teach it, when we remind ourselves that our body is made of the earth and animal Reiki, it's not just about animals and helping them with Reiki. It's about connecting us to the earth and to connecting our divine self with our 
human self. And so I think that helped bring me into my body. I've lost like 40 pounds. Oh my and man. I, since the animal rake. And I thought, oh, it's because I've moved to Ecuador, but it's not moving to Ecuador was part of the healing. Um, but I think it's had more to do with, I can be safe in my body. This is my body. It's my body. Right. And I have to take care of my body because my body was my enemy for so many years. And wow. I didn't, I, well, I wanted to be fat. So then I wouldn't be attractive or not that I'm that attractive. It was like stuff. And so it's the sexual trauma. It could be just like one thing that happens. It could be cyclical or whatever. And, and then it just affects everything. And so the Reiki, when it's just like, when it goes in, it starts to release that everything shifts. Amazing. And let's talk about that, Karen. I, I love that because let's talk about the empowerment and just shifting from the victim mentality. Sometimes with energetic work and even myself, I talk about how we often choose or chose our experiences from the other side in order to learn and grow on this side. And that can be confusing for people because they can say, I didn't choose this. I didn't choose to become a victim. Like, how can you say that? How that wasn't my choice. And, and it can be difficult to explain as well, but Reiki, regardless of why any of us have been victims of this, Reiki can help shift us out of the victim mm -hmm. mentality and into empowerment. And Karen, what would you have to say about this? I know from your counseling background, you have to help people understand or reframe all the time. So I think you'd be best to answer that. I think it's a matter of uh, looking at the trauma and finding what have you gained from the experience. Now, that isn't necessarily something to bring up right away you know, when a person is feeling very much in all the emotions, but as they start to heal, how have you become a stronger, more resilient, more compassionate, wiser person as a result of going through this experience? Mm. And that's similar to many of the things we choose. I have so many people. I do tend to work with a lot of folks who have been diagnosed with cancers and terminal cancers, and usually Reiki helps them to the other side of it. But they all say, I'm so grateful for this cancer because of how I learned and, and grew. And I realized that sexual assault, it may take a little while to get there, but do you find that people get there to, wow, I'm grateful this happened because now I understand better? Um, some people do. Yeah. That would be a worthy goal out of any kind of trauma to mine the, uh, the learning out of it so that uh, we can see how we've become a, a better, wiser soul. I don't like to, hmm? I said, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all those experiences. I am. Yeah. It was part of my preparation to do what I'm doing now. And you too, Karen, how can you listen? How can you be a safe space? If you don't know what the heck they're talking about or what they're feeling, it makes you more empathic. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is our college prep. That was our college prep program for what we're doing in life. And yeah. to empower other people. I think every yeah. one of us is here to empower other people. And how would we know how to do that if we hadn't had our own power taken and we had to get it back? Mm -hmm. And also for anyone that is an empath and, and uh, I don't know, probably at least 75% of people that are drawn to Reiki are empaths. And one of the things that I find useful in my work is I can feel the emotions that are getting cleared during the session yes. and know when each one is cleared. Um, so that's very useful. And although I can feel it, I know it's not mine. And so it doesn't bother me. And I'm not like taking it in. Mm. You're just, but it's more of an awareness, isn't it, Karen? I find that yeah. too. Karen, would you share what you do? Um, the Holy Fire Healing Experience and the Timeline Technique? Sure. Yeah, I'd like to come to just a few things to think about. 
And that is creating a safe and comfortable space for the session. Of course, we do that saying that we maintain confidentiality and respect uh, for the person and we're here to not be judgmental. And then being very aware of uh, touch Mm. and communicating to the person um, where we place our hands, where we don't place our hands, of course, on the breasts and the genitals, and to let us know as practitioners if any touch is uncomfortable. And you had somebody that, that, that was uncomfortable with a touch that wasn't in what we would normally consider a sensitive area, didn't you? Yeah. So we were talking before the podcast and uh, in one session, I had a a client bring up that in the prior session, she had been very uncomfortable with where I placed my hands. And I I said, I'm so sorry. And what position was that? And it was actually over the abdomen. And I said, I wish you would have spoken up. I would have easily adjusted my hand positions or worked over the body. And because I want to empower the participant to take charge of their body and what Mm -hmm. happens in the session. So it's very important that they feel in charge in that way. And to take charge of their session. And I know one thing that I counsel my level one and two students when we're just getting started is always ask, do you prefer touch or beaming? And if somebody Mm -hmm. isn't sure, you can just do the, the typical touch on the shoulder. This is what touch feels like. And then back it off a few inches this is what beaming feels like and and never be offended if somebody wants beaming. They're just not comfortable with touch and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, very important. And then also it can be helpful to teach them some grounding yeah. techniques. I have a grounding technique that I use that I've had a lot of good success with that involves bringing the earth energy up through the body three times and then the earth energy up and out through the aura three times clearing. And uh, I will often teach anyone that's had some trauma, that grounding technique, either at the beginning of the session or at the the end of the session to help them further clear and release energy. Maybe we'll get you to share that with us to end our podcast, Karen. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then, yeah, I've just developed a specific protocol that I use, and that is starting with the Holy Fire healing experience around whatever trauma it is that they have, when that involves asking them um, where in their body they feel the trauma, and then if the trauma had a shape, what shape would it be, if it had a color, if it had a weight, if it had a message for them or a sound. So identifying that and then doing a meditation while I'm continuing to do the Reiki energy. And then if checking back in with them at the end of that meditation, at the end of the 15 minutes and asking them, what does the shape look like now? And then if the shape is not gone, ask them to see if they can release it to the earth or up to the higher power. And usually they're able to do that. And then another thing that I like to do is work with emotions. So whatever trauma they have, they don't really need to tell me what happened, which is very useful because that can uh, be triggering. uh, And that's something about about the Holy Fire healing technique is that people don't have to tell us what they're working on. They can just say, Mm -hmm. I have this trauma. Can we release it? And that's all we need to know. Or I have this energy. Can we release it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So then I like to ask them about their emotions and I got permission to share the experience from one of my clients that I've had two sessions with. And she came in with having been abused by a family member. And at the beginning of the session, the first session, I asked people to rate their emotions on a scale of zero to 10 with 10 being the most intense and zero being no intensity. And she rated lack of confidence at a nine, self-loathing at a 10, which, oh, that's so sad. And then sadness at a 10, shame and guilt at an eight. And uh, during the session, we also worked on uh, anger and anxiety. Um, 
And I also ended up doing, well, then I do the timeline healing that I've written about in my article, Transforming Emotions with Reiki, that's on my website at karenharrison.net. And we've included that in the podcast notes, you guys. Okay. And I did a presentation on that at the Reiki retreat. So a link to my YouTube channel on that. And, and that's then also another, in the notes. <laughs> and then and then a similar article that was written earlier called Lessons from Holy Fire that's on my website. I just work on the timeline, like imagining that scale of self-loathing being like top right. And then I send the Holy Fire Reiki and all the other symbols that I work with, including the Karuna symbols, because the Karuna are very helpful. Yes. You know, we've got a zonar for spiritual anesthetic and uh, Halu for deep healing and many others, hearth filling up the heart. So I just imagine working timeline present all the way to back to birth on it. And I can just feel where it feels stuck and work on clearing that and may call in my spiritual resource to help. And I work with master healer, Jesus. So he comes in, he shows up as a fireman which I like a practical Jesus, you know? <laughs> yeah, shows up as a fireman with the hose and he'll hose it down, work on clearing that. And then I work on clearing the ancestral lineage because oftentimes I'm also a marriage and family therapist and I'll see these patterns transfer down through generations. Yeah. So several generations may deal with sexual abuse or physical abuse or alcoholism, whatever. So I'll work on ancestral patterns. And then I'll also work on past life patterns. Mm -hmm. And then I go on to the next emotion. Um, So I did two sessions of that. And one session uh, I worked on yesterday, she came back after a month. And we worked on anxiety. And it was a, a five at the beginning of the session. By the end of the session, it was a zero worked on anger. It was a six at the beginning. It dropped to a zero. Sadness went from a seven to a zero. Shame and guilt went from a four to a one. People pleasing, Karen mentioned that, another common side effect of being abused, went from a seven to a one and self-loathing from a seven to a zero. Now, and yeah, in the prior session, the lack of confidence went from a nine to a one self-loathing 10 to a one and a half sadness, 10 to zero and shame and guilt, eight to one. So usually what happens is the, the first session, those numbers will drop a lot by the second session. They may have gone up some, they won't have gone back up to where they were. And right. then we work on clearing them out. And then my goal is to get all the numbers to stay at zero to two. And so you'll keep continue doing sessions until the numbers stay down. Yeah, until yeah. the numbers stay down. And so that's that can that's usually two to six sessions. And then it can also Amazing. be very helpful to do the healing spirit attachments exercise from Holy Fire Reiki, because whenever someone has been traumatized, woundedness, um, some energy that is not theirs can come in through their uh, damaged energy field and attached to them. Mm -hmm. And it's usually energy that is trying to help them in some way, but it's over time, it is not helpful to have someone energy hanging out with you. So clearing that off, and that may take doing that procedure one, two or three times to continue clearing that. So those are the techniques that I use along with just doing a regular Reiki session that have given me so much success in working with all kinds of trauma. You say that after you finish working on the client, like even in the same session, I believe you actually go into the ancestral lineage and... Yeah. So So each of those emotions. So for example, people pleasing, I'll work from current lifetime present all the way back to birth and do several passes until I feel it clear. And then I send that healing back through the ancestral lineage until I feel it clear. And then I'll send it back through past life lineage until I feel it clear. And each pass is really as quick as I'm moving my hand. So I may do like one to 
three or four passes on it. And I'm just doing this kind of in my mind because I've got my hands usually um, on the client or if I'm doing a distance session, I'm usually working on a proxy of the client through the doll. Amazing. And Karen Keg, I wonder if you could give our listeners, uh, both of you, just, just the hope or the understanding that you are going to get to the other side of this yeah, you and, do. <laughs> and, and maybe what that looks and feels. It seems for me anyway, that it, it's not just like oh, this instantaneous, miraculous healing. It there's, there's, there are layers of, of things, different experiences, yeah. just like you have, you have, you experience life in different layers. And so well, the, whatever's ready to release then will release. And then it's almost like, it's like making room. It's just, it's like, you've got this big knot of junk. And when I've done Karen's technique mm-hmm. that she's talking about, and you, you do feel it's just, hmm, what's that? It's like a little bit of a knot. So you get the, when it begins to let go, it's It's almost like a, a, a flower opening up and then it's going to continue almost like fractal. And then you keep clearing little things and it gets better over time. I guess it's taken me. It's, it's been a 10 year process, mm-hmm. but my gosh, what a 10 years. It changed yeah. everything, <laughs> uh, but I guess it was time, but it opened up everything and my entire life changed. Everything changed. It did. And I'm still, I, I had some emotion about, but, they, but this is good. The good thing is I can go, oh, I have some emotion about this and I'll let it come up. And then it just goes. I used to be terrified to let any of it up because I thought I would just explode or kill somebody if I let any of it. Like, <clears throat> so I, if you're listening and you've got that, I have so much anger. And no. And I thought I was such a pacifist and so helpful and so kind. No, I was an angry person. <laughs> yeah. And so that even will come up sometimes. Oh, I have some frustration about this. But the wonderful thing is, that once you've untangled that knot, once you've, you make the decision, I think that's part of the holy fire experience that's so genius is you have to say, are you willing to let it go? Yes. Like whatever that is. Yes, I'm ready. And it's that choice, but that's part of the empowerment. Yeah. Um, holy fire that you realize, works. No, I'm not a victim. And I do have a choice and I do choose to heal whatever this is. I want something different. I don't know what this is. Maybe if you're sitting out there listening and you're thinking, yeah, that happened. It wasn't that big a deal. Or I dealt with that. I'm fine. I've had therapy. I'm good. I'm a tough woman. I'm good. But then some little thing will happen and it comes up. So what was my point? My point is, it's, you can do it. You just think you have to be willing to like, I need something different. I'm unhappy. I'm miserable. Ugh. And it's a surrendering like to, I think that's what, what, helps the energy come in. It's like you say, okay, Reiki help. I don't know. I don't know what needs to happen, but you need to do something. Help me. And you've got spiritual allies all around. You've got, everybody's been just waiting for you to go, okay, I'm tired. Can you do something now? And they will. And 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 it's going to happen. It's going to happen slowly. It's going to happen. So weird. I can remember after we got the Holy Fire 3 upgrade, I can remember there was a song that was a big trigger for me. And I remember I was cleaning the house and I was just singing the song. And then I realized like, oh, where's that pain? Where did it go? I didn't even know I healed it. I didn't know that it had been taken away. Um, wow. Yeah. It's just, it happens pretty effortlessly when you just, when you allow it. Yeah. That's amazing. And I want to say, I think that's a good point that we may do a chunk of healing at a time. Does that mean it's entirely healed? Mm, probably not. (laughs) As we go through life, then maybe there's another aspect of it that comes to our awareness that we weren't aware of before. And okay, now this aspect of our trauma is presenting to be healed. So it it is a process. And I also want to say that the way that I found of working with it is certainly not the only way of working with it. No. I have a way that I found that works for me. Many other ways of working with the energy will work. I think Reiki guides us to the ways of working with it that are right for us. And so I just want to validate that if you're working with sexual abuse in a different way than what I said, that's an equally valid way. 
because a just a gentle Reiki session can also do the same thing that I am doing. Yeah. And I haven't done it with the timeline technique. I only learned that from you, Karen, a few years ago, but just using the Holy Fire healing experience. And I also, like you, found that the spirit release process was important as well and had success with that. But that being said, I'm, I think I'm going to ask you to lead us through your process, as I mentioned, and the timeline process as we end today. But before we do that, is there any other advice that you guys would have for either Reiki practitioners working with this or people personally working with this? One more thing is we do in the Animal Reiki 1 and 2, the Garden of Forgiveness. Oh, yeah. Experience and that with the Animal Reiki f- Frequency. And that was transformative for me as well. That really And it works well with, with clients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good to point, connect yeah. with with the earth. That it's it's that mother earth energy and letting go, being ready to forgive. And, and for me, it turned out to be forgive myself more. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, is, I'll just throw that out there too. Mm-hmm. That is so interesting. And that does release guilt and grief and shame and blame and compassion. You, frequently and, in the class, we're talking um, about what we carry in regards to our pets. Oh, mm-hmm. did I put them to sleep too early? Or did I make them suffer too long? Or that kind of stuff's related to pets, but it's also that mother earth energy for yourself. For us. So mm-hmm. it was helpful with sexual trauma for me also. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And and the grounding. Karen, is that I think that's what Karen was going to do is Karen was going to bring us through the grounding and maybe she mm-hmm. could even bring us through a, a timeline. Uh, or a, mm-hmm. a, or I could bring us through a holy fire healing experience as well, which mm-hmm. whichever. Okay. The other thing that I think is important for anyone working with trauma is uh, to be able to gently ask or suggest if the person has done any counseling. Mm -hmm. around this and possibly to have some counseling resources that if the person has not worked with a counselor to suggest that could be helpful in conjunction with this. Many of the people that I do this Reiki healing work with have already done a lot of counseling and they've cleared a lot of the trauma already, but there's still an energetic residue that is left in the body. So that's the part that they are releasing and healing. That's a good point, Karen. And I've actually had clients, we'd be working on something else and remember abuse um, that they had just shut away and locked away so tight. And so I do keep, so I, I've trained several counselors to Reiki, which is fortunate because I've asked them if they would be open to referrals And they give me their contact information, their cards, and I am able to pass those along when that comes up. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so what is it that you were wanting to lead through? I don't know how much time you wanted to (laughs) take. We don't have to spend the full time in silence. We can just spend about four or five minutes in silence. But I'm wondering if you would lead people through the grounding and then maybe just follow with one one sort of timeline experience or holy fire healing experience how it just and taking us through one of those so it's something that we can feel and then perhaps feel a bit more confident after reading your article to work with others is hmm. that possible karen uh, sure normally i do the timeline after i've done the holy fire healing experience mm-hmm. we can do that Uh, So do you want to lead a a short Holy Fire healing experience then? And then I'll do an example of one of the timeline processes. And then how about uh, end with a grounding meditation? And end with the grounding, bringing the grounding Mm -hmm. up through. That sounds perfect. Thank you. I'm going to invite anybody listening to, if you're driving, push pause or pull over. But to just go ahead and close your eyes. And just... Activate your Reiki energy again, placing your hands in Gasho and then just placing them comfortably on your body wherever you feel guided and breathe and just understand that Karen and I are sending you Reiki now as well as you process this 
I invite you to imagine that it's a beautiful, warm, sunny day and that you're walking through a trail in a beautiful forest. As you walk along and as you breathe into yourself, you breathe in the life essence of the forest as the energy of the earth moves up through the bottoms of your feet. As you walk along, you see a trail that goes off to the left, and you decide to follow that path. Following that path, you come to a clearing in the forest, and in the middle of the clearing is a small hill covered with soft grass and beautiful wildflowers. Imagine that you're climbing up the hill and that you can feel the grass and the wildflowers brushing against your legs. And when you get to the top of the hill, lie down, gazing up at the sky. And as you gaze up at the sky, a beautiful beam of light pierces the clouds that are above you. And this light shines down directly upon you and all around you and it feels very comfortable and warm and safe and you recognize right away this is no ordinary light this is a light that comes from the highest heavens a light of reiki and it's here to take care of you go ahead and notice in your body where any trauma may exist. And if you're not sure, it's okay just to guess. And ask yourself if that trauma had a shape, what shape would it have? What color would it be? What would the surface texture look like? Would it be heavy? Would it make a sound? Is it more of a sensation? Or does it have sensation? Does it have a message for you? And just ask yourself if you're willing to let it go. And because you get to direct this, you may not be willing to let it go entirely, but if you're not, are you willing to let a percentage of it go? And what percentage are you willing to release today? You don't have to do anything to earn this. You simply have to be willing. And then Reiki will do the work on your behalf. The light that surrounds you focuses on the shape for a moment. I invite you to focus on it yourself with a willingness to let it go. And then turn your focus to the light itself. And as you do, the light that surrounds you begins to guide you. Go ahead and follow the guidance of the light for the next several minutes. And when it's time to come back, Karen will lead us through the next techniques. I'll let you know when it's time to come back. Thank you. 
now, Karen, I'll turn the process over to you. All right. So call to mind any shame and guilt that you might have and tune into it and think of it on a scale of zero to 10 with 10 being the most intensity and zero having no intensity. And just pick a number to rate the, the level of intensity that you feel in this moment on shame and guilt. And then I've got my holy fire activated, my tree of life symbol from animal Reiki and all my symbols and all my Karuna symbols. And now I'm imagining a timeline of present for any of the listeners of shame and guilt. And just working on clearing that in the present, back through the past. And clearing it. And for anything that's stuck, just calling on the highest power, your spiritual resources, my spiritual resources to help clear and release that. And I just like to work with Master Healer Jesus. You can work with whoever you like. Work on clearing that from the present all the way back to birth. And now clearing that back through ancestral lines. Clearing out ancestral patterns of shame and guilt. Anything that you might have carried into this lifetime just as a result of being a product of the ancestral DNA and clearing that back through the ancestors. And now clearing it back through past life patterns. So any past lives that you've had that involved any shame and guilt, working on clearing that out so that it's cleared all the way through all these different dimensions. Okay, and then now take a moment to check in with your emotional intensity number on the shame and guilt and see where you're at. Now mind you, this is just one of the emotions associated with abuse and while it's most helpful to clear out a number of emotions to get the best effect. This is what we can do now. So just see where you're at and see if you've gotten any change. And if you have, great. And if not, that's okay. It may come later or there may be some more work you need to do on this to release it. And then sometimes we also then intend to fill it in with some of the holy fire lights, which are simply higher consciousness energy. So just let's imagine the light of self-acceptance coming in and flooding through that entire timeline, the light of self-acceptance coming in and just illuminating that entire timeline, bathing it all and bathing you in love and self-acceptance, filling you up. Now, let's just imagine that we are now giving thanks for the session and the healing that you've experienced and bringing this session to a close before we move into the grounding exercise. We thank you for your work with this healing. We affirm this healing is continuing on the spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional realms long after our time together today is through. We give thanks to you for participating in this. And we give thanks to each of us as the practitioners. 
And you can open your eyes whenever you're ready. And let's also do a Kinyoku, dry bathing to clear, brush, intending to release anything we might have picked up. And so that's brush. what you right and hand at your left shoulder and Reiki activated, brush it across to your right hip, then your left to the right and right to the left again, making an X and then go back up to your shoulders and brush out to the ends of your fingertips. And for those watching, Karen's going to demonstrate, but I just wanted to say it verbally for people that are listening. Yes, thank you, Pam. All right, so the grounding, if you want, you can draw a Reiki symbol at your feet and over your head. And if you don't have Reiki yet, that's okay. Just imagine yourself filled with love all around you. And now intend to bring earth energy up through your feet to your head on an inhale. And I like to do the hand motion just to help the energy to move. And then exhale, sending the energy down through your body and down deep into the ground intending to release anything that needs to go. Inhale up. And exhale down. Kind of like taking out the energetic trash and emptying it into Mother Earth, who's grateful to receive. Inhale up. And exhale down, releasing and clearing your body. And now this next time, we're gonna go up and out, clearing our aura. Up, out your crown, down around your body, clearing your aura down to the ground, anything that you're carrying in your aura. Again, up, out, down and around, clearing your aura down to the ground. And again, up. Out, down, round. And that's it. Grounding your body and clearing, and grounding and clearing your aura. Wow, that was amazing. Love that. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. And wow. thank, yeah. thank you all. <laughs> and thank you both of you. I think that was wonderful. And I hope that is helpful too any of you listening thank you so much for showing up today we appreciate you and we hope you have a beautiful week keep spreading that beautiful light of reiki wherever you go in the world namaste thank you namaste thank you everyone <laughs>